course, I started to, um, just reading everything. I just bought like left wing, right wing, every type of a thing to read. And then I stumbled upon kind of Marx. Uh, like I bought, I bought like in the one day, I probably bought like Hayek, Marx, Adam Smith, you know, Chomsky, just like a whole load of weird stuff uh, and uh, sat down to reading it and got into Marx. And then I kind of, that was at the time when I started the podcast. And then, so it's been a kind of a long term kind of a interest in the area of, and then I, um, but like also was taking in lots of other heterodox kind of schools, stuff like, you know, uh, post Keynesian stuff, MMT, all these different types of stuff. And, um, uh, somebody asked me to to do a podcast uh, read read the fundamental principles of communist production and distribution the book that i've always been going on for like laboriously for the last couple of years um and i found that just an amazing book and it made so much sense to me uh it cohered with like my understanding of value theory and of history and uh you know, it just um, around the same time when I was talking, when I did that, uh, Donal, my co-author, got in touch with me. And you, you all right? Do you want me to stop yeah. or keep going? No, 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 I'm good. I'm communicating with because she wants to listen, but I need to put. All right. That, that OK, on. sorry. Yeah. Um, and um, and uh, then we kind of we kind of got into an intensive kind of uh, Donal got in touch with me and we got into a kind of intense discussion about it. And it kind of just led to uh we kind of quickly you know pretty quickly kind of i kind of thought like christ uh we actually uh might have a a book in this and i think that we have i think we have a load of really kind of deep insights that we might be able to bring hopefully the book like if if the book is what we think it's going to be it, it it could be a large development, I think, to the kind of field of socialist economics. But, you know, it's hard to tell when you're in it. I suppose every author thinks what they're doing is meaningful in some light. But, uh, yeah, no, definitely. We think we, like, I think uh, the, the GIC has, like, you, you know, they, they really, if you were to say what did they get, what did they, how did they advance stuff, I think they show us, um, uh the importance of like not just a kind of a legal aspect of ownership like the workers in the Soviet Union legally you know control the means of production but in reality they didn't the idea of a labor time measure as a means to prevent an an a, 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 a somebody sticking be, the, between the uh, uh worker and their product and being able to control the surplus so measures like so so that very important thing and then i think um you know concurrent with that it's kind of downstream but is the the, the approach of the general ledger which is like you know an open uh, accounting uh you know what would you call it operating system for the society but like so you know there's so much that flows out of these kind of core relations that I think the, the the critique of the of the fundamental principles is often that they don't really give anybody any anything beyond just basic principles, uh, and myself and Donald have felt like that. You know, uh, you know, so much flows out of those basic principles when you approach the basic principles with the correct like kind of understanding, you know, kind of a lens to approach the problem. And like I, we found, I think, you know, a lot of kind of fundamental things that kind of flow out, you know, obviously these are second order things, you know, like if we were to look at capitalism, we have, you know, private property as a foundation and exploiting, you know, a, a, an ownership class and a proletarian class, right? And out of those fundamentals, everything flows, you know, the, the contradiction, well, yeah, out of the con and the contradiction between use value and value, like, but these kind of core fundamental things, you know, hedge funds flow out of, you know, you know, the falling rate of profit flows out of, you know, the fact that industry has moved from Western Europe and America to, to China and, you know, the Far East, these kind of 
second or third, fourth order dramatic events flow out of these basic, the basic funding blocks of, of how the economy is constructed. And we, like, we've kind of basically tried to do something like pulling apart the these uh, basics and to explore uh, their development and their implications and any contradictions that lie within them, essentially. And, you know, that's that's what the book is kind of all about. In okay. a nutshell, I suppose, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, so there's a lot to address there. And I'd like to, l- let me introduce myself. And then, then um, I would like, because I, I read the book. Um, and uh, so let me just say thank you for your podcast. I've been listening to it as an information source for the development of uh, the work that we produce at Oravana for quite some period of time. So it's actually been extremely useful um, and very different than uh, a lot of the other podcasts that I listen to um, in the content. I think the content's just like really high quality and has been a source of uh, useful information for a long time. Um, oh, thanks, so. Yeah. Yeah. So you live in London. Um, but just so you know a little bit about me, I've lived uh, I lived in Surrey for seven years, Cobham, Surrey right. for seven years. My father's British. My mother's American. I've lived in uh, many different countries around the world. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of sometimes I really wish I was I love the English countryside. Um, that's one of the <laughs> places to just walk around. So uh, in terms of Oravana, Oravana essentially produces a set of societal standards, societal specification standards. And uh, the classification for the configuration of the type of society uh, that the standards essentially describe the conception of and detail the operation of is given various names by various people. So I refer to it refer to it as a community type configuration of society. Uh, my wife would pro- probably uses that term too, but she, you know, she also uses the term communist uh, right. configuration yeah. of society. Um, and uh, there's also the resource-based economy configuration of society uh, by a group of other people who advocate for our common direction. There are people who use the term new earth when they're trying to describe a type of society without a market and state. I prefer the technical term community type configuration of society. I came to this direction as a research intelligence analyst. So uh, I began looking at how to develop a uh, a set of, I was essentially wanting to create a curriculum for a way of living on the planet where we lived without the market and without the state. And uh, I was looking at developing that curriculum based upon the information that was out there at the time. And I didn't find sufficient information to describe the concept and actual technical unit uh, configured operation of that type of society that the socialists and uh, communists of the, of the past had kind of given a, a very brief overview of and described more of their perception of transition. And uh, people had sort of described the vision, like in terms of its integrated material, uh, efficient resource usage, uh, urban uh, and uh, rural environments, such as like the Venus Project and Fresco. Um, But no one had really put it all together. So I found that I couldn't develop the curriculum because the system hadn't actually been fully described. So someone had to take a step back and actually produce the socio-technical standards for what we now on the planet have a sufficient information to develop. Whereas in the past 100, 200 years, we didn't have the information, I don't think, accessible to uh, someone who's conducting the research to put together a set of socio-technical standards. And we now do. And so this has come about what we've essentially designed or developed is a set of standards that represent the social organization the decision organization at a higher level in economic system is just a decision system. So this primary four systems, social system, decision system, material system, and then the lifestyle. So we essentially, what we're talking about in terms of my view of kind of this uh, this socialist production to the point at which we get to a place where there is uh, there are no tokens exchanged at all. Um, and we're just doing pure socialist economic. And some people say, why are you calling it socialist economic calculation? Because, you know, it's just really pure economic calculation on the entire economic system from the uh, the service structure, which I don't know how 
familiar with the, the design of the system, but the service structure for the calculation is, is essentially organized into a set of, instead of like the term industry where we use today, it's, it's organized yeah. into a set of classes and those classes are life technology and exploratory support. Um, but I, I would like to know more about your book because that really is why I contacted you. I, it right. seems like, and, and that in, in terms of kind of what we're developing at Oravana, the standards, it fits in to not only the decision system itself in terms of actual uh, decisioning and planning for the operation of a community configuration, but the transition too. Right. Like, um, God, there's a lot to talk. What, what do they say? Um, so, like, one of the big problems of like actually existing socialist states or com you know communist states, whatever we want to call them, Soviet Union, blah blah blah, is that uh, they weren't very efficient, right? As in, they were grossly inefficient. Now, some people will make the case that it is a function of, say, a lack of computational resources or you know, sufficiently big mainframe computer uh, stuff like that. But we we would see that the problems that come out of that stuff are much more fundamental and lie in the social relations inherent in central planning and what we what we will show in the book is how the general ledger system uh, allows one to allow society to self-regulate you know and we're very heavily influenced by the notions of stafford beer and his ideas of planning, which I think are just common sense. It's like if I want to go for a walk outside, right? And it I think it might rain. Okay. I I bring a jacket with me or an umbrella, right? That's a plan. It's in, you know, some it's actually an economic plan. It's actually the economy, right? That is a part of the economy like anything else. That the planning is done at all scales of recursion, right? It's done by everybody all the time. Now, one of the major things for us is that, like, understanding Marx's point as about, like, that the the socialist society or communist society, whatever we want to call it, will bear the birthmarks of the capitalist society coming out of it. And uh, that's one of the amazing things of the GIC, that it has essentially kind of mirror forms to what are capitalist forms, right? But the social relations at their heart is totally different. Right? Like, the general ledger, you might as well think of the general ledger as bank accounts, or company accounts, you know, right? But it's completely different when it's all centralized and open and everybody can see what it's doing versus, say, a capitalist system, okay? So we see that the social relations involved change the nature of stuff. And similarly, uh, where am I going with all this? God, um, that the, the social relations that are based, that socialism is based upon should be able to have self-organization in a similar way not, not, not in a similar way. So it should have its own self-organization principles, just as capitalism does. OK, so for us, that's a, a major tenant. And, you know, we see the 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 under the use of like beers kind of uh, ideas of the Bible system, you know, um, the VSM, the Bible uh, system, was it the Bible system model um, uh, as a way of organizing society um, organizationally, but also as an uh, understanding viability as an approach to uh, for as approach to self organization. Fundamentally, like everything, all the nature we see, all the trees, that everything that's evolved, they 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 manage things self organ like in a self organized manner. You know, our hands are essentially self organized. You know, whatever is going on in our body and. The, the, the socialist society has to be able to be self-organized in a way that capitalism is, you know, in a, in a not saying the same way, but in, in, a, in a way that allows capitalism to be productive, because we kind of see that if it does not have self-organization as its basis, right, A, it's going to end up being a class of bureaucrats, a class of technicians who dominate, but also like um, uh, a society that that is... You know, it's not going to be a communist revolution overnight. There's not going to be everywhere communist all of a sudden. It's not happened with capitalism. It's not going to happen with communism. If communism is to exist and and to to become the dominant mode of production, like capitalism was superior to feudalism, communism must be more productive and see and, and seen as superior to 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 capitalist production. So we need to take into account all of these, and I uh, I think so. It's organizational form ideas of self self-organization the social relations underneath 
And then, sorry, so I know I'm rambling, saying a lot of stuff here, but it, uh, trying to get it all in. But the, the idea of transition as well is not something that we agree with, with the kind of historical record ideas of of transition like we like i don't know how familiar you are with the cyber sin project in in chile right you know uh, while they had did not have the right fundamental social relations involved it was essentially still a capitalist system but a uh, more state oriented kind of a developmental kind of state capitalist kind of system with aspects of work control which were you know, exaggerated greatly, but they 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 had the right approach in essence. Like they said, three years time, we're going to have a new economic way of operating, and we see transition as in, like it's not this one hundred year uh, time span. We see transition as uh, uh, instituting the general ledger, non exploitative labor time accounting approach. Uh, get it going three years probably five years ten years whatever short period of time and then you have a socialist or communist or society whatever you want to call it and from that point it has its own developmental tendency that we can tease out via its own contradictions and the the basic the basis that the tendencies inherent in the i think we can we can say quite a lot about the the development of of the society based on the social relations that are its base. That's, I'll stop there. That's quite a lot. <laughs> so, what's being phased out and what's being phased in in your plan? Oh, I think like I would think that the, one of the most important things that they did in the cyber scene was they started to understand uh, to each 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 company if a workplace would have a production function, mm-hmm. right? So they would say, "This is what we designate as." Uh, as as social labor essentially, they say, you know, with these machines in this factory, with these staff, we think this output is fair. Uh, this 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 amount describes what is like uh, acceptable level of product or intensity of labor for everybody. So we have an agreement between society and the workers, like a production plan. Okay, mm-hmm. so that is kind of fundamental. Uh, and we do not have uh, like um you know a market socialist approach we don't have factories competing against each other we have communal reproduction that's like one of the key insights of the gic how they determine price and how funds flow back so firms don't make profits or or losses they just are able to reproduce so i think like that is a major task like that that i think in the in cybersyn in like a year and a half they got you know, I think thirty percent of the of the com- of of output had agreed production functions. That's a major task, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, major tasks. So that that to me is a major task. You know, reorienting, uh, say, the creation of a general ledger, for example, uh, the implementation. Hey, hey. Of, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying, like, creating a general ledger getting all, say, points of sale technology hooked up to a general ledger instead of like a private banking system. You know, these are major, major uh, stuff, uh, ways of applications for interrogation of the general ledger. Like the general ledger should make it so simple that it should be like Google Maps, right? Mm-hmm. You or me, there should be an app, there should be just, a, a, you know, a a a a. a what would you call it? an ecosystem of applications that sit on top of the general ledger, whereby you could, you know, you could just say, "Oh, my factory, the the factory that's down the road there. Ah, uh, I don't. I wouldn't, what's what do they produce? And you sh- you could be able to see the raw materials that flow in. You could see where their output goes. You could see, you know, how many work there, the working conditions. Everything should be on the general ledger contained there. You have to see the production plan." You know, you should be able to understand. You should be able to do that at higher orders of 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 recursion. You should be able to do that at industry level, local level. You know, at at every single level, there should be. It should be as easy as just using Google Maps to interrogate the economy, and like that allows uh, planning to be done. Like, and we also see planning to be needs to be done at the level at which it needs to be done. I know that sounds sounds like a dumb thing to say, right? But like. There is no reason why, like the organization of how we 
uh, do stuff on our street, say, if we have resources for spending on our street, needs to be decided by God's plan. Right? It makes no mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. God's plan know nothing of us, right? And if they were to know about us, they would have to essentially duplicate all our knowledge and have a team of specialists who would specialize in what we already know here. So like, so that uh, the level of recursion, like, so planning should occur at the level of recursion at which it's required. Like it's a simple, basic self-organizational principle, really. You know, I decide who should wear my, what clothes I should wear today. You know, when I'm a kid, maybe my parents do. When I'm older, it's me. We don't need God's plan telling me as a part of an economic plan what to wear, right? It, right. It's absurd. So the level at which uh, things need to be decided is the level at which they should be decided. And I would also say then, like, when it comes to, like, I think socialists have problems dealing with consumption. Like, consumption is a freedom. We should reclaim the part of, like, the actual one of the few freedoms you get out of bourgeois society of consumption right? It should be reclaimed for a socialism. Uh, it shouldn't be take what you're given. It shouldn't be moralized. It should be like y- your consumption is you interacting with the world and society. It should be uh, a, div- it should, it should be thought of uh, and used as a way for, pl- as plans. It's like a disaggregated system of planning. And when it comes to consumption, there is only individual consumption and types of group consumption. And what planning really is, is group consumption. You know, if we, if, you know, in, in the extreme case where there is no consumer, uh, no, con, no collective consumption, um, uh, my personal consumption would drive the production, everybody's consumption, personal consumption would drive the, the organization of production within the society right it would determine it would tell us oh we need more cheese production or we need less cheese production we need more solar panels and we need less solar panels and so to the extent that there is planning like it is that for example say society decides we want to go fully solar or fully wind or whatever the hell it is that together as a society we determine that this is our overall collective spending decisions and then that determines production right so that this idea that there that 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 the capitalist market is in is is about reflecting uh the wishes of people is, is incorrect like what cap like that's not what marx is getting at when he says the end of the market he's getting at what what it is that the market does under capitalism that it it allocates resources to more productive firms and it penalizes others. And so you have this system whereby it operates, essentially, capitalists aren't out in control. Uh, they have to behave in certain ways because of the competitive nature of the system. That it kind of, like the, the production system actually looks and feels like it is in charge of society and not people. And once we break that link between like how we how we reward productivity uh and go from individual uh reproduction as opposed to communal reproduction the nature of the market and the re- the reacting to people's wishes is not something that is out of control and works against the nature of the people so god i've said a lot there so <laughs> I, I have some technical questions ask me stop me and um, ask me questions okay yeah ask me some yeah questions so uh to... so our, so the first one is about uh tokens credit um, do yeah. the workers do the workers earn credit? Uh, can the credit be tra- or tokens? Can do the workers in your model own uh, acquire tokens by working hours? Can those, right. and are those tokens only in their what can never be traded to another wallet? I don't really care only- about that. To be honest with you, like we don't have like we think that's and a kind of an anachronism. To be honest, okay, like that, like so the way we envisage it. This is the yeah. way we envisage it, right? A firm, say you're working in a factory, the factory uh, basically is able to uh, write to the ledger, okay? Okay. And it, the, the, all places, of the only places that can create new labor tokens are places of work. They do so in direct relation to the hours worked. So you clock in at nine o'clock, you clock out at five o'clock, 
you've created a token. You created six tokens, right? It matches exactly the labor you've done. Okay. Um, with respect to can they transfer? Like we kind of see that as more of a problem of like say technology in Marx's time that like somebody could technically gather everybody's say tokens and accumulate capital for themselves. But when you have everything on a general ledger, um. Now, we have issues around privacy and all that, but extracting from that, which should be easy enough to do with, like, you know, it would be easy to see if if Tom O'Brien had, like, somehow accumulated, like, one million worker hours, right, when everything is mm -hmm. on a general ledger, right? And, you know, so... Uh, I don't have any. We 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 kind of just see like the problems of like why should why should a, a freedom like right now if I want to give my you know my mate twenty quid for his birthday why I shouldn't be able to do that right it's kind of it's it's only the only reason Marx objected to it was for fear of somebody getting an ability to accumulate wealth and then to pay people and to direct society so okay. like don't have any problems with sending microtransactions and so there Anybody would be an energy sorry. sorry go ahead there would oh, no, there, there be an energy input does the energy input do you pay the uh the energy is there a token payment to the energy producer for the creation of you know for the power cre right. for the electricity required to yeah. create this token from working hours right so like so we get into things then like another uh, kind of thing we're going to be introducing is the concept of communist say or pro socialist whatever in the book we're probably going to use the term socialist because i think people are less uh you know it, it's not as frightening to people given history <laughs> right so we're, probably made, we're using communism sparse but we use yeah. socialism even though i like the term communism but like as i think it's like oh, fuck you i try but, to uh, avoid all of them yeah <laughs> yeah they'll just call you a commie anyway that's the thing yeah. so you know it's like but anyway yeah uh, so uh, the, the concept of communist rent right so like at heart right uh what is the socialist project the communist project anarchist project it's about getting rid of unearned income right uh, base you know you can't be an exploiter right you can't be a yeah. rentier yeah right that's that's the kind of basic bit now uh, so like if there's an underlying kind of legal law of, you know, you know, like the private property is like absolute, it's like, you know, no one under incomes. Okay. But there are certain resources that are not produced that are like that they aren't kind of, you know, infinitely elastic or something, you know, like essentially like corn production is essentially, you know, you can produce as much corn as you want or not, you know, it's not really a problem. Right. Or oh, but say, yeah, maybe cutting down maybe a teak wood, for example, right? That might be something that we want to preserve, right? If we are pricing things purely on human labor, what would happen if we have a Sitka spruce and a teak tree and cutting them both down both cost the same amount of labor, right? Everybody would just cut down all the teak, right? Mm -hmm. You get your nicer stuff, right? So you obviously have to control it somehow, right? So obviously labor is not like isn't sufficient right so what you need is a system so let's say you could imagine a way to do it for teak say and we say maybe a hundred thousand teak trees are allowed to be cut down every year to make it sustainable right say that's i'm making it up i've no idea right say it's a hundred thousand okay and using the general ledger and kind of you know the notion of algodonics i don't know if you know about algodonics no, it's kind of like explain. So algodonics is like Stafford's beard term for kind of like pain signals, right? So instead right. of like kind of using kind of market signals, like raising the price to change stuff, you don't actually need to use like price. Met price. You don't want to say, let's actually, let me just, let me just ignore that. Let me just go up. That's I'll, I'll get into that maybe later. <laughs> but uh, um, so you could see that society could, you can set a rent, right, on the use of teak for society. And you can set it such that uh, the price of teak uh, is such that demand is only matches the 100,000 that we have set as the limit. Okay. And this can be automatically kind of 
calculated. If demand is low for it, you can lower the price. If demand is higher, you can higher the price. This could just be built into the general ledger very simply. It's just a, probably a simple little function. So what would happen then is you have the price of the teak has got two components. It just has L and R, right? It's got labor and then it has rent, right? So when you go into your DIY store and you go to buy your teak wood, you'll see the price of it is like, you know, 48 labor tokens. And that is like 25 L, 23 R. And the, the rent part is then pushed it to society to pay for communal stuff. Okay, so we have this way of regulating uh, scarce resources. So when it comes to the power, what you're talking about, maybe perhaps there is a, maybe it's solar panels and solar panels, the production is very easy on the environment and it, it doesn't, there is no rent part. And it might literally be how much labor is main, it takes to maintain the electric infrastructure. Okay, but it may be that the power, there is some nuclear stuff or there is some, you know, oil or gas. And we want to limit that. And so what that would mean is that the energy people who are the energy companies, when they're trying to purchase the the gas or the oil, will will have to kind of pay a rent on it. So when you're buying your electricity, you're paying for both the labor, inherent labor embodied in that electricity, and you're paying uh, a rent if it if there needs to be one. OK, so the general principle is that everything is just L and in places where there are scarce resources, limited stuff, there will be an R, a rent component. But that rent that's paid. So me that actually wants to take over the Sitka spruce because I'm going for that uh, real nice wood, I pay and it goes into general taxation, say, and that will fund, you know, the, you know, the the the, the stuff in society that is determined to be free or not. Right. Oh, and there, there's a tax on this. So tell me where the tax fits in. So like the the in the GIC, you have the factor of individual consumption. Mm -hmm. Right. So this would just be like funds that will go instead of. This is essentially just like another element in the factor of individual consumption. So you like so the so my, the money I spend to get my hands on teak over spruce. Right. That goes into the general fund that might be used for paying for like the health system or whatever, you know, uh, if I want to live in the center of London, right, versus in Hull, OK, right, uh, because land is, uh, you know, there's rent associated with land, is, there's only so many apartments, you know, beside the British Museum, I will, I will have to pay a rent above the going rate for just the, the labor time cost of the apartment so because i want to live in this you know cool apart cool part of town or something that will then go into general funds and it will actually reduce the amount of taxation say, the, for everybody else has to pay so we'll see these rents operating you know we see like these are similar to capitalist forms right but the actual underlying we're not paying a rent to a capitalist to get rich we're actually yeah. paying a rent for social good right and if Two more questions. Uh, so when the token is paid, is it deleted or does it go into the general fund? Like for us, like we've looked into that, like, and it's just, it's really uh, an accounting notion more than anything else. Like uh, we've just been, we've been waiting this on and off. Like, like I think, yeah, it, well, this could go very deep. I, I I can't get into it really too much, but I would say just to say that it's an accountancy thing. Like it is like, you know, a, a bank, if we if we think about like you you lodging money in your bank account, you go in with a 10 pound note, you can give that to the bank teller, right? And they can shred it, right? And yeah. then they can print a new one or they can yeah. use that one. So it, it, it's one of those things where it's like an accounting principle, but like, when we get into that, it's it's interesting you should mention that, but like we see <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's quite it's very deep, but we we see that the God, yeah, uh, what's the best way to say this? You could you could say it like we could say that the, the things circulate, okay, and uh we are a company, we're we're a firm, an operational unit, and we sell our we sell our stuff to 
um, we create shoes and we send our shoes to the distribution center. OK, and so now the distribution center needs to pay us back for those shoes. OK, say. Right. And when somebody comes in with their labor token, their labor token, they give it to the distribution center for the shoe. That labor token flows back to us over here and we're all good. We balance the books. OK, now we can look at it like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But. In capitalism, if you do not have those tokens, you you your production stops, right? It actually you, you go bust, right? If you do not get, if you don't sell, you go you'll go bankrupt. In socialism, it would it, it would look like that. It will have the form if you if you allow the tokens to flow, say to, to to circle, it will look like that. But what in reality will happen is that the the factory that has sent stuff to the to the distribution hub, if it sits there and it doesn't sell, like the lack of selling is one of these pain signals in Algodonic. It's like a, a pain signal goes back to the production uh, firm and it says, we do not wish anymore. We we do not, we, we, we don't need anymore. They're not selling. They're sitting on the shelves right now, right? So it's not that the operational unit needs the labor tokens to flow back. That's like a kind of a uh that's like a like a form, it's like a visual representation, you know, a number representation of the physical um economy. But really what's happening is that like production has occurred. So like what I was saying is it um was about like the nature of the tokens that how it's like a kind of a it's only a kind of like it's kind of uh like they're only a representation of 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 the physical production system so like what i was saying like, like if the things weren't selling it's not that the operational unit will go bust it is that in reality the they're being told not to produce and like because we have stuff already so you can say that the operational unit is going bust but really what's happening is society is telling its own productive apparatus we have enough you are producing too much and so you might say that, oh, because the thing is not flowing back, they're not selling, we we're going to bust, we're going to have to like lay off workers and stuff. But in reality, what's happening is society is telling productive system that your productive system, our productive system in shoes is too big. We want to reduce it slightly, you know, and the shoe producers themselves will then say, well, is this a short term phenomenon, a long term phenomenon? Do we need to act on this? Do we need not to act on this? And then society decides where to direct production to change it, you know. So the idea of whether they circulate or not, it's it's kind of a. a <clears throat> I personally kind of feel like they should circulate, as some you know, because I think it's it's an easy way for people to visualize the thing. It's like a secondary way. It allows the books to be easy to understand. But in reality, like it's not like. It, it is not a. It is not the want of tokens that is causing the productive apparatus to change, right? That's the kind of. Mm -hmm. It's not like where there's a like an a, in a literal sense, if you don't have enough money, you go bust, kind of a thing. You know, it's society telling itself, you know, more of this, less of that, and society then has to organize how to change the productive system uh, in such a way as to allow it to function the way they want, you know. Okay. Uh, are you Raptor. still there? Hello. Oh, sorry. It looks like we're frozen. There's like Travis. There we go. Okay, I'm back. You're all right. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Grant. You're back. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, can I just kind of sort of restate what you've uh, what you've said? So, there's um there's essentially yeah. this global information system. Um, right. And you have uh, you have factories in which people work. And there's no competition between these factories. Uh, the number of working hours you put in, the fa the facility, the production, let's call it a production facility. This production facility puts tokens in your wallet related to the number of hours you've worked. Those tokens in your wallet, uh, you you... You, you're saying you would prefer to have the ability or there's the ability for you to give tokens to other people. Right. Like to the extent that, you know, it's not a problem. If we find out that I'm like leading a cult and I'm getting all my right. followers to send me, like 20 grand each. Right. Like then society will see it and they will act on it. Right. But to the extent okay. that it's not yeah. that it's not a problem. 
So there's a justice system here as well as is essentially what you're saying. And then we have a, a price system where the products of the factory are have some sort of price control. That price control, uh, so then you can pay the token to access those services and products. Within the price control of those services and products, there essentially there's an L and an R. The L represents the labor time in working hours and the r you label rent but i would think of it more as uh mineral and power input so you have labor then you have uh then you have essentially uh material input and you have power input and that's like a rent on society is that kind of what you're saying well like like the the, the power might be like well i would say the rent is more broad because it includes things like say limited resources used for power but it's also land rent it can also be like, you know, ecological stuff. So like I think land, from a kind of a classical political economy point of view, like rent would just lump all of that, what you're talking about in. It is like it puts in the energy too, because look at the price of oil in the market today. It's not linked to the amount of labor taken to produce it. It's a, it's literally right, a rent, right? right? Like the, produce, the cost to produce a barrel of oil in Saudi Arabia is probably like 10, 12, $15, right? They're selling it for $100. All of that, 85 extra dollars they're getting is a, is a rent, you know, in the kind of a, in any economic terms. Yeah. The other thing I would say is like, there's not a price control, right? What I would say is that the price is calculated based on, you know, the, the average. Um, so much like in capitalism, like for Marx, you have this idea of the socially necessary labor time involved mm -hmm. in a commodity, the average amount of labor that's embodied in the commodity you have one factory doing taking two hours another taking six hours one taking four hours you average over them all it's calculated automatically on the general ledger there's 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 no control really it's just this is the price right and mm -hmm. you know uh then you have a whole the idea of how to determine like how you split up the goods but that they're just like what capitalism does with screws or whatever kind of codes they use in England, I think they're called school codes, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, so what's in, you know, is this a certain type of shoe? Is this a certain type of shirt? Is this a certain type of solar panel? You know, and then the average of those. So it's not so much a control, but a, like an objective, it's an objective thing that is literally comes out of the records that sit on the general ledger. Okay. And it's uh it's entirely quantitative, or there are qualitative aspects to it. For well, so if it's, it's right, I would say it's qualitative in in the in in it like so. This is one thing that like a lot of planning systems do. Like a lot of people try and put everything into the price, right? They they say uh, to the extent that they even say maybe aesthetics. You know, there should be a you know like the price should be a vector of all these different things like human labor, amount of CO two, methane blah 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 aesthetics you know you name it it's an infinite vector right and you can come up with some measure for us like fundamentally i think utility is an impossible thing to measure but how does society but but society measures it itself in a self-organized way like society itself determines the utility of cabbages over broccoli by the demand in the marketplace for cabbages over over broccoli, right? The productive, the demand in it will determine what is what society thinks is the right balance between these things. But fundamentally, as well, like um, this is a subjective element to the rent, right? It is like, what am I willing to get the you know the West End apartment over like the one in Aberdeen, right? There's a sub subjective thing in there. But when when you when they're summed. You know, when they're summed over like the society itself, they would get an objective character. And like if we're talking about, you know, so that's the way we look at it. We do not see the price as being the thing that we should impose. Like some people have this kind of idea, you know, that the, the price should be it should inherit, it should incorporate all knowledge in some way of like some n dimensional vector. We say kind of no, it's determined through its self-organized properties. You know, uh, I think there's kind of like a fundamental, uh, there's, there's a fundamental point that the way that we describe in it and the way that it's described in the GIC is that it is, um, what was I going to say? It's, it's rational. 
as in you could explain it to a five-year-old when you say what's the price of this you know plastic bucket for going to the seaside it's the amount of labor in there and say a limitation on the amount for oils that are used to create the plastics right right and you just say that's that's what it is and this facilitates everybody at all levels of society to be able to understand the economic system it gets away from this idea of like that the a diamond the price of the diamond the the essence of a diamond say that that makes it valuable is somehow in the physicality as opposed to in the social relation right it is not the you know the the difference in price between a aubergine and a cabbage has nothing to do with the aubergineness or the cabbageness of the objects it's got to do with the labor inputs right and any on any rents on the side but you know the labor input so fundamentally we we see this as one of the most important aspects of it because if you don't have a system that society can rationally understand you end up with a class of people who understand how it operates and then you're not long till you go back to a, a class system okay yeah i have a couple more questions the first one is uh how do tokens relate to the other two phases of life so in the lifestyle system, there's the uh, in the lifestyle of even people in a community type society or a socialist type society or a current society. There are three phases to life, education, contribution. So this token system relates to uh, people in the contribution phase of their life and then people in the leisure or retirement phase. How what how are tokens and, and this price related to how does you know how do people in the education phase of their life acquire access and what happens to people who are no longer in the contribution phase of life where they're not right, receiving like, tokens for working hours right yeah like for 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 us we see all of those problems as policy issues right so it's just like as opposed to like a fundamental kind of foundational part of the the economy to us it's like you know it, you know you know, there is no reason for us why the system could choose to actually uh, consider um, educational work uh, to be paid uh, like actual productive work. There's no technical reason why that shouldn't be the case. That's up to society to decide. That would change the, essentially the, the rate of consumption for those who are in the productive sectors. So it would mean that like the consumption that I could do as a worker to pay for you to be a student I may have to pay like 10% tax to fund that part of people's life. And I might have to pay another 10% to fund the retirement stage of life. Okay. That when it comes to, you know, that comes into kind of policy and, you know, that's for us, it's like, once it doesn't go against any of the fundamental, you know, not allowed to earn, uh, you know, unearned income or whatever, it's just, uh, it's whatever society decides. Like society could easily say, well, it's study and study is kind of fun. Uh, maybe we'll give you a half, right? A stipend, you know, maybe the pension they get half or two thirds or, you know, like it's 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 whatever society would determine. Okay. And it all and has to come busy. It's a distribution. It's literally a distribution of funds out of productive sector anyway. And it's society itself deciding, you know, 21% young people 29 percent old people the rest for productive people uh and so the the general ledger it would uh it's both a, a ledger for um for three things it's like a ledger for tokens it's a ledger for um resources and it's a ledger for transactions along with i and of course there are these the identities um, do the factories have identities on the ledger? They do. There are fact there are two types of identities, yeah. the production and the individuals. Yeah, like uh yeah, like so you know, that's the way we kind of imagine it. I could imagine that, yeah, like organizations and individuals, you know, like um right. Uh we like there's also like um you know, so the, maybe the, the on the on the general ledger, there may be different types of information available with the different types of objects. So, the mm -hmm. the actual amount of the actual types of data that would be associated with a factory wouldn't be associated with a person, say, right? Okay. You yeah. know, so like there could be you know all 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 the information about the factory can can sit on the general ledger. It, it, you know, 
it could be health and safety records could sit under like uh, a factory's ID. Uh, everything could be in there, you know. Okay. Um, you should be able to see all all flows in and out of any factory. Very, you know, visually, you should be able to just see flows across the economy. It, you know, it should. It's just like a, their visualization process is based on the core economic data. Yeah. And what calculation, what a mathematical calculation method are you using here? Like, um, you know, what major are you using? You're using linear algebraic matrix mathematics to do some of the actual like economic calculation, like Kantorovich, no. Leon. You're not doing no, you're not no, using nothing. any of that. There's, you see, I think they have the, the socialists have it all the wrong way around. Right. So you're you're using you're using then how are you referring? Why are you it, you're referring you're referring to it as economic calculation? But it's not the same economic. You're not using the same sort of matrix mathematics at all. You're not using no. any ma ma matrix no math. matrix mathematics required. Like that's fundamentally. So this is this is a big point, right? This is a major point, right? You can guess today, right now, you could get all of the bank accounts. Right. You could get all of the company accounts. Right. Now, they are essentially put them together like a ledger. Right. Obviously, the yep. you know, yeah. I'm talking just in, in generalities. Right. You could make it into a ledger. And from that ledger, what what is that ledger represent? That, rep that ledger represents self-organized businesses and people in the economy. Deciding on what production should be. Now, you could get that. That that ledger, you know, this like long three column ledger or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And you could do a mathematical transposition on that to create an input output table. Okay. And that input yeah. output yeah. table would tell you what actually society did the last year, right? So you could yes. actually get it from this way and put it this way, right? Instead of it being a long one like this, you can put it into a big square one like that, right? Yes. So what 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 we have in capitalism is capitalism creates its own input output matrix, but like it's only a record of what capitalism does. It's not that it creates an input output matrix in in advance, and then everybody follows the input output matrix. Do you get what I mean? Socialists have this idea that the planning should all be done in this big input output matrix, but what the general ledger is doing, it's actually society is organically. Uh, managing its own production in a decentralized way to the extent that decentralization is necessary. And then um, uh, afterward, general ledger, you could do a mapping and that would actually show you what the input output was for the society. That like, so, you know, there are inherent problems with doing like, a, like an input output matrix way of approaching it, which we can, which we will get into in detail in the book, but essentially it it, it actually takes self organization out of it. So we fundamentally oppose the like you know, not only do we think it's not good social relations, right? That it's it it, it ne uh, commanding from the top down uh, a production plan is not just kind of puts forward kind of you know, a system of planner type way of thinking about uh, the society, but also it won't, it does not reflect a self-organization principle. It's the opposite of a self-organization principle. Now, um, I know you're wincing at me there. Let yeah, me get a glass just, of water. Are you back in one Sure. Minute? Yeah. Take your yeah. time. So, sorry about that yeah no worries um i'm not sure that this I, I just look at it as statistical services so you run the you run the 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 economic calculations just to see what's possible and then you use the that data to inform a so if i if i show you um i don't know how familiar you are you are with like uh the oravana system um but sure, we have sure. We have uh we have two thousand essentially two thousand models. Let me just share my screen quickly. Uh, yeah. 
we have around 2000 models that essentially describe the, the operation. And uh, the decision system is where we just talk about economic calculation. Also in the project execution, a lot of like what we've been discussing here are described as potentials in the project execution document. So if I go to like um, decision system inquiry solution. So this is a, this is essentially like um, a procedural decision system. I guess there are many versions. There are many different ways of looking at it. But right. you essentially have uh, this happens at a global and local scale because we're dealing right. with uh, if all resources are to be declared the common heritage and we're accounting for all resources at a local level, there's both uh, planning for resources at a global level for just life and technology support. And then yep. there's planning for local habitats uh, and the preferences of individuals in those local habitats, uh, uh, accounting for need as categories within the economic calculus, the global economic calculation system, where right. we uh, have issues that are recognized with our fulfillment. And those issues with our fulfillment are resolved through habitat service systems, are resolved through, uh, essentially, it's another word for a city or like an eco village, a place where we live together, where there's some form of production. And then, of course, in the future, there might even be leisure habitats where there is no production, the, contrib right. the contribution completely meets the requirements of those. So in this global service system plan, we have statistical services that in, help us inform the local plans and also the global plan to ensure we have global uh, mineral and production for life support uh, and technology support. And so here you have a set of uh, inquiries. Um, and those inquiries, uh, some of them have are qualitative, some of those are uh, quantitative, and they're conducted by uh, working groups to produce data in order to resolve essentially in the middle a solution. So, right. and it, just the economic calculation is just used for information purposes. What are what's your what's your what's your view on this sort of procedural method where we have working groups that are developing not just production plans. The purpose is to to develop uh, the actual deliverable plans right. of the habitat services where you have need categories and preferences within those. Right. So like um, so I like. You know, I imagine something kind of like this, but I, what I'm trying to get at is that, you know, if we think about what actual socialist planning, when people, most people talk about it is they come up with a big plan at the start of the year, they send down orders to all the production plans and say, you do this, you do that, you do this. Us at the center have decided this is the right thing to do. And um, maybe there are certain amounts of democracy that filters up. Maybe there's not. And but you see, in in this model, there's there's not that. In this model, you okay, have yeah, a but I, yeah. So I understand. I like so. What I'm trying to say is that uh, we see, uh, like, so for example, the shoe factory that's creating the shoes, say, right, uh, is is essentially regulated by the production requirement of the distribution centers. So basically, people saying we want more shoes, we want less shoes, right? There's no need really. For the sense, say, uh, the society to actually get involved in what is an organic pull and tug between production between different sectors of societies, to the extent that it doesn't affect society in other ways. So the shoe factory and, is polluting, for example, right? And to the extent as see, the, I think what's unique in this model is that we have a habit. I haven't shown we have a we have a unified model for for human need fulfillment, which is somewhat right. unique and is not present. So we have like if I share my screen again, um, and amongst the two thousand models we have, uh, we've unified we've unified the deliverable, and the deliverable for the material system is uh, if I search, if I just click here, file search. Uh, let's say habitat, because all these 2000 models are organized, habitat service. So if I find habitat services,
you're 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 uh, muted. You've muted yourself back then, Travis. Okay, so here we go. Sorry, so, sorry about that. And that is until the point that we have a unified deliverable. We actually have a we have the 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 all the needs that we can categorize, and we do that on our website. All the needs we can categorize all human needs, and then you can categorize them by these specific material services. Right. So you can categorize. You, you can finally, instead of having that pull and tug, you can you can identify. You can define specifically what a material fulfillment service system looks like optimally today, given the operational processes and the final service structure separated into life support, technology support, and exploratory support. And if I click here, you can represent this in different ways. And what are, and this represents to priorities within, within our society. Life support priority, technology support uh, also has priority, and then exploratory support, which isn't like a, you know, an emergency priority thing. And these are different ways at which we, and then it, it essentially comes out into these integrated living, a new type of material environment, not the type of material environment that we see around ourselves today, which is a, you know, all, that's also part of my question. How is this going to transition? How is what you're proposing because this is really i think what we're looking how will this how is your how is your proposal here going to transition resources and people into a different uh material configuration uh the sort of configuration that i think we're both looking to like a community type configuration right. how is it going to do that and these community type configurations of society have a different life space than the life space that you and i walk outside of our buildings most of us today and live in urban suburban and rural market state neighborhoods right we we like so all the stuff you're getting into here is like so what we would say we we would kind of see i think now uh you know there's a lot of stuff there but like i i i see that <clears throat> we think that like a society that uh will determine what uh these priorities are itself organically okay so um uh, no, I don't think that I sorry to interrupt, but that's yeah. not correct. We have we have needs. So we have and I can I can show you the list. Or Oravana has like a huge list of needs and there's no. Right. Organic... OK, but I mean, but but I mean, like, uh, I mean, more so like that, you know, there will be there is needs to society, but like society determines its needs. OK, uh, no, mm -mm, no. I mean, there's a do you have light? No, you have life support technology support all of all of this material life that we have around us you of course you have social needs as well you have socio-technical needs you you have this so i can hear why why don't just to clarify i share my screen and i pull up the uh the spreadsheet we have on because it's you know an organism given the state of technology available you could say determines its needs so but you right. can't say it. I don't think you can say a society. Like obviously, like I can't say that the society doesn't determine that we want to breed sulfur instead of oxygen, right? So, like, there is like, but I mean, like, the priorities that, um, you know, as scientists, we could objectively come up and say that we have to prioritize this one, this thing more than that thing. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. in reality, uh, what will ha like what happens is that society determines which thing is more important than the other thing, regardless of what, as a scientist, I might think is the right thing. Now, in, in capitalist society, the 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 social structures are such that the those that own everything determine what are the needs and what aren't. In a society that are uh, that is democratically controlled without rents and exploitation, we would see uh, society determine what it is and you know to the extent that science would be able to come up with things that are like what you're talking about here i i think are the most important things to do so would a actually democratic society converge on what this on what these things we, we're talking about here to the extent that these things need to be decided by at a societal level at a regional level, at a local level, at a street level, or on an individual level, they are at the levels at which society would determine uh, how to, to 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 fix these things. Like, say, if eco ecology in your local, say, 
neighborhood like it is that neighborhood that determines it uh to the extent that it doesn't uh impact neighborhoods close or other neighborhoods so we we i don't see these things as uh are, are, are what we're saying as being in contradiction with this i just see um uh I just would emphasize the organic nature of 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 society like society has to come to this itself if it's a democratic society it has to come you know there has to be an integration what do you mean of by science democracy? sorry what are you meaning by democracy and your use of the term in this context right i'm not talking about bourgeois democracy right I'm talking about like how well, God, you know, there's so much in the book that we, we I think is so copacetic with this. It, it's just so hard to get it all across. Um, but we have we, we see like the 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 one thing in the in in the cyber scene that is amazing that they had this yeah. concept of recursion. OK, so that they modeled the Chilean economy as layers of nested VSMs all the way up and down. Right. And essentially, uh you know, because of like the viable systems model is that it's based upon viability and cybernetic principles, self-organization principles. We would see the structure, organizational structure of society having to be built of similar VSM type structures. Right. OK. And to the extent that your stuff, uh, I think, looks I know I can't tell exactly there's so much stuff there, but like to the extent that that is how we think society destructs itself. And there's an important part in the in 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 um in 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 the Stafford Beer book where he talks about he met uh, Allende Beer met Allende and he was saying to him you know it's system one two three four five and he described all the thing and then when he came to system five which is like the kind of decision making body say of the VSM structure uh, Beer was saying to him and that's you Presidente uh, El Presidente. And uh, Allende was like, no, 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 no. And he goes, El, El Pueblo, right? Right? So, you know, the people, El Pueblo oh, or whatever. Same. So, same. yeah. And so that is how we envisage how how things work, that to the extent that anybody is... Uh, to, so even to, even with a, a simple example as a shoe factory, right? They, they have like their system, one, two, three, four, five, the five is probably normally made just up of the workers, right? You know, deciding what they're going to do with this. Are we going to get this new machine? Are we going to do that? Or I'm going to create a new product or get rid of an old product, whatever they're going to do, right? But to the extent that that factory is is impinging upon society, right? Anybody can enter into this system five, right? The actual uh, decision-making. And that principle is uh, throughout the economy, most of the time, you could imagine the system five, that factory, no one even gives a damn. Nobody cares. It's just a factory there. It's grand. People go to work. But to the extent that it is affecting them, people can go in and 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 and, and structure their decisions or whatever. And so like mm -hmm. that is the overwhelming principle for the entire society, that it's democratic to the extent that anybody who wants to get involved in an issue or is affected by an issue can get involved in it. And so we'll see. So the, the organization structure of society has to be uh, able to organically, rep, you know, represent the needs of the people to the extent that it should say. Uh, I don't know about the last sentence. But... Okay. Yeah, I think we we refer we. I mean, sure, we use the word participatory in the decision system right. as if like it's a particip participatory system. Um, right. Like we're not yeah. even given hard and fast. We don't give hard and fast rule. We don't. We're not saying they has to operate like this or that. We we don't talk about. You're obviously. I think have got all that loads of details on and all that. We're kind of doing it at like a. We're we're kind of abstracted above, and we say like you know. So when we talk about to the extent that it needs to be done at this level, that's mm -hmm. the level at which it should be done. You know. Okay. Yeah. It's not for us to we're say good. right that there shouldn't be global planning. Say. Right. But the nature of global planning is different than I think what normally is thought of as global planning, like a big input output table. We get all the things and we run for a year. We say no. Like, let, let's imagine how global planning is done in capitalism, say, or semi global capitalism, you know, semi semi, you know, semi global bodies like, say, maybe the World Bank or something like this. Right. 
Mm-hmm. They, they they have up they, they do have structures in capitalism that do untold damage around the place. But what we're yes. saying is that like, you know, say for example, we say a global initiative in a social society is to get carbon negative, right? Uh in 10 years. Say that was we had a revolution in the morning, they wanted to actually suck carbon. We have a 10-year plan to take carbon out of the atmosphere, right? Um now, because everything is on the general ledger. Um, we would have when we get into a lot of stuff about how we plan capacity planning like for us a, a major component of planning is capacity management okay but society should be able to say look at the general come up with a plan say for example they say well we need to build 5 million wind turbines and 5 million solar panels say and they will be able to say what are the raw materials required for this what is our productive capacity do we have spare capacity for this no so as a part of our plan we say okay as a society we are going to push x amount into solar panels to up our ramp up our production we need to actually increase mining right or they might say we are going to put a a large rent we're going to basically this is going to uh so basically you would say like we only have like five million tons of steel this year okay and this is going to take up two million a year so what will happen is that the, a massive rent will apply to steel and that will have knock on effects to production throughout the economy that you can be able to see just like a, a decision tree through looking at the general ledger. You can see who's going to be affected, what's going to be affected, that society can interact and use this like our 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 record of what the output table of a self-organized society is to help plan to the future. Right. But it's not that when we come up with this plan, we then do a new input output table for the entirety of society. We say no. We go, OK, we have these. We need to send funds to the miners. We need to send funds to the solar panels. We need to build, send, uh, buy, you know, set up land where we're going to put these things. We're going to set certain amounts. We're going to set up a body here for offshore wind to planet and we fund them right in a way but it that is just like what happens under capitalism you know they'll say we need to you know go green in ireland you know by this it's going to we do a report for the state and they say it'll cost us three billion a year and we're going to fund this that and the other it's the same general thing but it's not an input output table telling everybody what to do it's us using the results of self-organization and uh, information we have in society to to plan society like it is in in the capital at the level at which it's needed yeah that makes sense it's not it is the the input output table the results of the input output table aren't telling people uh what What to to do do. they're they're inform they're informing um a decision space in which new master plans for habitat for a network of habitat services come out of um, right yeah um I, th- I I mean, I, I like in the project execution, I, I think the transition that you presented here, I do have a little bit of a problem with circulation of the tokens. That is sort of in the in in the project execution. We do talk like I don't know how just how I had a look. How much There's so you... much there. I've had a look uh, at stuff, but like it's so much there. I, I don't I literally don't have time to go to read it okay. all like it's. Incredibly yeah. detailed. Like, yeah, I, but- I can't wait to read your book. I mean, I really can't. Like, I'm, you know, I, I really, it, look, this is really interesting to me because I think this is the, the, what you're proposing here. And I know your background, what you're proposing here, and I'm sure is going to be extraordinarily interesting and detailed information. And uh, it is, I think, the transition to a society essentially where, um, you know, there is no longer a need to receive tokens from work. You, we might be, we're still calculating working hours and uh we're still calculating uh rent on land uh commodities mineral right. you know not commodities anymore but mineral material resources minerals right. metal and power and uh nobody has to receive tokens and then give those tokens to any other organization at the end of it but that requires a transition proposal like you're presenting right here where we right. begin reorganizing the structure well, of society into this so I would make a distinction there. I see okay. what the CyberSyn project was trying to do. Now, it wasn't like they didn't have the correct political economy and social relations. Yeah, Grant. Uh, uh, I would see that the that the CyberSyn equivalent is like the transition. And then you have essentially like a lower stage and a higher stage. Now, when resources aren't scare, are, are, are limited, 
right? We have to tie uh, consumption to work for yeah. for reasons of productivity. When productivity is exceptionally high in distant communist future, the productive system is different. And the relations of distribution are a function of the relations of production. And as the relations of production, as production modifies, thus you get to a higher stage where you don't need uh, consumption tokens for, you know, labor tokens for point of consumption. You probably still use them for points of planning, but not consumption. Right. But, mm -hmm. uh, but, but like, so uh, it, it's a transition, lower stage, higher stage, as opposed to the, the, the kind of standard one as long transition, 200 year transition, everything free. Right. So it's mm -hmm. a fundamentally different uh, way of viewing it. But so like a, a cyber sin type, then we're in then we're in communism or socialism. Like labor tokens are some communism or socialism, but they're just the lower stage where we mm -hmm. don't have the resources to do productivity based on need, uh, uh, consumption based on need. So, yeah, it is essentially. Um, which sorry, the which is essentially a, a two. It's like a two two tier two phase like. It's like a two-phase system. We first move into uh, a system where we have, uh, you know, labor tokens are used at the point of consumption right. until production becomes sufficiently integrated and efficient that there's no longer a requirement. When do you, right. How do you see number of working years decreasing over time? Is that a metric that you would use to evaluate? Instead of working hours, you know, uh, yeah, working like years a, over time, how do you look at that metric? Uh, whatever society determines like we, we don't kind of get into it to be honest like it's like you know you would have to think that's probably a function of productivity and everything you know i don't see getting out of labor tokens anytime soon like like it would take like if you think about it like the actual <clears throat> there's so much existing capital that when we say we had a revolution in the morning and we had our system put in place all our capital is capitalist capital built on capitalist social relations. Our houses are all isolating, fucking alienating houses. All our software structure is fucking crap. You know, the, you know, uh, our tools that we use in our machines, the way classrooms are built, everything is crap, right? It would take, even if you wanted to change everything over, overnight, you couldn't change it. The amount of work that we entailed to change it, that it would take like literally hundreds of years to wash this capital, like this, dead labor out you like capitalist dead labor out of the system and replace it with communist dead labor right like that it's going to take a long time and all that time we're, we're, we're going to have challenges we're going to productivity is going to take a, a long time to get towards like if if we were to have a socialist state in the morning maybe the working week could be 30 hours a week or something but to get to a place where people don't care about say you know, Travis has only worked five hours this week. I've worked 30. Like, why should he get as much as me? Right. This kind of capitalist bourgeois, Marx calls it the bourgeois mentality, you know, bourgeois right. Like, you know, if, if it was that like I worked 12 minutes and you work three minutes, like I wouldn't give a damn. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, like, am I going to say, fuck you, Travis? You know, I was here at three minutes past nine. You were near the nine minutes past. Right. People don't give a shit. Right. But like, yeah. that's a long way off. That type of productivity is a is a long way off. So like, you know, that that's, you know, that's how I envisage things. And when it comes to like, what is the working, the length of the work, working life and all that kind of stuff. Again, like, you know, that is a function really of productivity, I, I feel. And you know, and it's a thing that for society itself to come to terms with, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I had another question. Uh, oh, uh, transition. How do you see the implementation of this? Um, would, would you? What would be the, the top level term you'd use to refer to this uh, this this model that you're putting, this token model that you're putting forward? What would I be the top level term that you'd use what sort of classify would it be a token model would it be a you know what language would you use around the uh, top level title or label for this type of uh, token model right you know like uh, you know uh we're going to make a we're going to like make an argument that it's like that's a you know a a a model based on labor time product like labor time socialism is is the only type of socialism that's not uh, that's kind of viable 
so to the extent that we're going to kind of call it anything, it's just going to call it kind of socialism or communism, to be honest. And the reason I say that is like that uh, there are inherent problems with like the I talking about, like, say, the cockshot type input output approaches, the central planning approaches. Like if, if you look at, say, uh, and, the, and, the, and the class relations that they actually imply, right, they imply, a, you know, an overseer planner class. Right, uh, cock shot. Is... Well, I don't know. I, 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 I think, I think, I think we'll we make that. We'll make the case for it anyway. You can, we, 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 like, whether you like when we make the case, you can, you can, you can okay. hear the arguments right more. It'll take too long for us maybe to go into it today, but like that, that, <clears throat> but that fundamentally, like that, there are problems with, uh, with planning from the center. Uh, in a kind of a direction, you know, uh, you do this, you do this, you do this, right, approach. It's like if we look to, like, say, the Soviet Union, for example, they did amazing, like, uh, fundamental scientific research. Like, fucking half the shit we use today and all of our electronics, all this stuff, it's coming out of basic research out of the Soviet Union. In the time of, of, of all the Soviet Union, there is not one single... A consumer product innovation of the scale of like a CD player or a, you know, a uh, microwave or something. You know, I've, I've done a bit of research in it. The only thing I found of any note, you can, you'll never guess this, but like, like the only thing I found of the consumer product of the Soviets, have a guess now, see if you can, if, see if you can get it. Ah, it's ridiculous. You'll never um, guess it. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's I, some sort of food cooking, some sort of. Uh, no, 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 way. Way more, way, way, way worse. Like it's a children's railway, you know, like these small railways that like kids like to go on, you know, like in a fairground sometimes. Oh, have, like, yeah. Like, yeah, literally, that was like about the only consumer innovation I found in the Soviet Union, <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> right. And you think about like capitalism, like you're just watching late night telly in America and there's some like, you know, here's a new thing for slicing an onion or this thing. Right. There's no self-organization that literally when you the, the social relations involved in these top down kind of planning stuff they actually are only able to copy <laughs> like capitalist stuff like they were only able to copy and usually very badly uh copy them that there is not a, an inherent self organizing prop uh, 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 uh social dynamism inherent in the ones of the past Right. In the ones in the past, I would say that that's not true now because we have a we have open collaborative design software and we have the internet. Whereas in the Soviet Union, they didn't have access to these new information technologies. Well, that's 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 one way you could say that. But also the other thing is that, like, you know, you are very uh, me too. Like we're nerds or whatever. Like we're interested in this <laughs> stuff. Like if we were in like a centrally planned fucking economy that was open and stuff, it'd be dudes like me and you. Or people like me and you that would be in there with their noses stuck into the measurement tables and the production stuff and all this, right? Yeah, I wouldn't call what I'm des designing though centrally planned. It's like it's it's right, more no. like yeah. But I would say I would agree with you that in the past it was central. You know, the Soviet okay, system was but, a centrally planned system. Right. Yeah. So like, depending, I don't know exactly the planning stuff you're talking about, but I just say in general the the yeah. the, the if the effect is that only interested people can really will be able to interrogate it as opposed to an open and rational say that that kind of rationality i talked about with like that just it's simple it's labor time and it's a, a limited resource rent right it's it's eleanor that everybody can simply understand how the thing operates they can just interrogate it like google maps like where you're going how does the economy work if it's not extremely simple like that you will end up with a coordinator class right and the coordinator class like any class system people class they act to their own interests in I, the end i'm i see that again then i have a problem with the language because uh i would not call coordination a coordinator class i think that's mixing it up with the managerial class and the language of management of which those two words are are really separated in the, our documentation both in the lifestyle and in a uh, project coordinate pro project essentially the project plan where we talk about the difference between mani managing and coordination of projects and one entails a, a higher level of um 
typically a higher level of uh, access or income or essentially a class it's the managing right. versus coordination which is just a function and there doesn't need to be a, a new a, a separate socioeconomic class of people right like uh like i, I can't I, I haven't read the ins and outs of your stuff but like in in general we would make the case that like if the organizing if the principles of planning are to the extent that it takes a large amount of effort uh you will and they're 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 less um easy to like so um specific like especially ones like like n dimensional vectors that have like uh, some kind of uh, abstract measure of utility involved that it becomes impossible for normal people just that aren't interested in it to understand what's going on like uh, that you change the 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 interaction between co2 and methane or metal and steel or uh you know egalitarian you know the, any type of rating that you have in it it's impossible for me as a person to know what are the impacts on the society in general from planning it becomes extremely difficult to interrogate you know like you know i worked in stats and stuff like that and you know you're trying to do simple things like explain to people you know control samples and this is it does this and this that and people's just goes right over their heads right and I've... and i i think that a system has to be understandable and interrogable by everybody and we will make the case, I think, that the labor time thing is the is is the necessary way to do it. That that's that that's going to be the argument. That's the way I'll put it. Like I, whether it coheres with your ideas yet, I I I not I, I can't tell you yet. You know. No, it does. It does. But you see, there's a the, the, again. I'm talking about the two phase. I came to this by actually developing the 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 end system because that was what I felt that you know unless we have the vision for what we're moving to, all of this effort on transition. Uh, could end up in a great deal of suffering again um, right. for us on this planet. So like uh, I do, I think the transition that you're, the transition proposal that you're presenting, we have to factor rent, we have to factor L and R, you know, yeah. and again, yeah, we yeah. have to use, we have to use consumption, labor consumption tokens. So, right. I mean, it, yeah, for the, for the end result, um, for and the I, vision. I think I would, I would say all the other stuff, like all the other aspects of what people determine what is quality of life the things that are outside of because really l is only a measure of the difficulty to do something that's all yes, it is complexity how yeah. hard is it to do it right it's not yeah. it has nothing to do with whether we that's what we should do or not like what we should do or not is determined by individual and collective consumption that is it like that's what that's what that's what planning is it's individual and collective consumption at different levels of recursion there's nothing else to it like if we decide we want to change society uh, in a way to go carbon negative that's a, that's us determining the nature of collective consumption yes it's collective consumption but, we're to change in right but so i don't know that the language that you're using is the language that i would use so right. like yeah no the, yeah the, the, i'm the, using it i'm using that language pejoratively to be honest okay with you. Right. Uh, but I mean, we, we probably will use this language because, you know, we have this notion of socialism or communism is that like consumption is bad. Right. But like consumption is just living. But right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. But I, I'm afraid that word detracts from actually the direction for the the vision, which is described in the project plan document. In the project plan, there's a there's like an approach, a direction and then mm -hmm. uh, ex essentially an execution. And the direction is human need, global human, the optimization of global human need fulfillment, right. given the availability of knowledge right. and resources. Well, like that is inherently which what is consumption you're just saying right. you're just using right. the word yeah consumption i'm, I'm or being demand. pejorative yeah i'm yeah. pejorative like when we're chatting like for the for to to like to to put forward the like to emphasize the the importance of like like consumption in defining what we do like it is what we do like the fact what we want in the world like is you know i i just think that's fundamentally people kind of have this fear of like of, of, I think we need to reclaim consumption for like for socialism, to be honest with you, plainly, like okay. I think that people feel like we should be austere, like, right, right. Any type of austere society like that is purely going to be a social, like an individual choice. Like you can, you can go Correct. join the Mennonites or you can join a whatever. 
you know become a monk a trappist monk or you know choose choose your choose your, your you know your your wine or whatever but it's like you know uh there is just like so communist society social society whatever you want to call it they're, they're going to be it, it, it's a bad society reproducing itself and reproducing itself is consumption productive consumption and private consumption you know yeah, I mean, I do differentiate these terms. So like community type society, there is no there is no longer a token. There is no longer this token model, um, you know, so I I try and differentiate when I anyway, I don't really I yeah, I talk to so many people who don't like the word commune. It's so sometimes difficult. So I, I typically yeah. use the word social state, a social state right. type transition society, and then a society without the market state, like a community type or communist right. type um how how long what's your uh, time frame and do you think this will be implemented if we have three interfaces for transition we have the market interface where we're essentially operating with within the market only we have the state interface where we're operating at the level of the state and then we have the public interface where we're communicating with the public what um how do you view this uh this uh, labor time socialist token model interfacing with those three elements of society okay you have to you'll have to explain that to me now what do you like, like what what do you mean by those three like you're putting that like what so, do you mean Right. So we're moving to it. We're moving resources and people from one configuration of society to another configuration right. of society. The current right. configuration has three primary elements. It has a state right. um, okay. where, where, you know, it has a market yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and then it has the uh, the citizens or the consumers. OK, um, like, you know, I'm a kind of an old fashioned Marxist here. Right. Yeah. So like we look at like how did feudalism go to capitalism? What was involved? Right. It was, it was like fucking uh, uh, revolution in every single one of them, as far as I can see, right? That okay. the mode of production, in, 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 the change in the mode of production implies a change in the uh, class relations within that society. And anytime there's a change in class relations in the society, there is like the equivalent of revolutionary. Now, maybe, maybe you're lucky in a country that the revolution is in France and then your bourgeois, then your your feudal lords give up and put the wave the white flag and you don't have a revolution. But if you look at like the history in Europe, the history in most places uh, around the world is that like it, it took revolutions. It was English revolution, uh, American revolution, French revolution, you know, failed revolutions in 1848 all over Europe. Some of them succeed revolutions after 1917, you know, so to change out of these mode of productions, you know, we had colonialism in the global south. Did the change in mode of production in in a, in its own different way? You know, in a violent way, different than a revolution. But like, oh wait, recall... so could you so, could you simply define revolution for me? Because people use that word in different right. in different so, ways. Uh, like Do you mean I, I, the use I, I, of violence? Do you mean the application of violence to people who have well, I think who it's are like, a higher class or right. Well, I think it's I think implied in it is a class. There has like. I, I don't like some people might might think there'll be a, a, a transition, but uh, I think like like what do you want? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second there. One second. Sure, take your time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um. So one. Uh, so I I feel like. Uh, I just feel like it's. It is statistically, extremely unlikely for a transition that is peaceful to occur because uh, you're not going to sedate the exploiting class into becoming non-exploiters. They will fight for their rights, <laughs> your exploitation rights. Okay. And like, if you just look to say the, like what happened in Chile, for example, now they weren't going to a full socialist state. They were going to like a, you know, state controlled uh, which is, you know, still the wage relation. So it still wasn't, it wasn't anything close to socialism. You mean the new constitution that failed, that didn't get ratified? No, no, I'm talking about 19, talk, the, talking about the past. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. And when, when the capitalists were worried about like, the nature of, say, I was saying and what it could imply for class relations and socialists, yeah. that the socialists were trying to play, the party were trying to basically walk this tightrope between the capitalist class and the radical socialists and trying to weave a maneuver. And what happened in the end was that they got shot, you know, yeah. and, and they got killed. 
Right. And I think that's the history of uh, that's the history of pretty much every single uh, any any unsuccessful or successful uh, attempt at socialism ended up devolving into a class war. So I don't have any hope for a socialism that that without I don't like I, I. I'm a realist in this respect. I don't think there's a transition that's not in going to involve, uh, you know, some some right. fucking class war. To be honest with you, yeah. and it's going to be horrible, right? And I'm, I'm just thinking I'm, it's built into the, into the class relations. I'm open. To, I mean, I I see that that is a. I'm not open to that. I'm I see that that is a possibility in the future. My I guess kind of a purpose of my life and is to to see that transition without the sort of violence that I think uh, a war war between uh between these right. um these directions or some sort of violence toward those who are of a you know higher access class. Although I understand, so I, I think there are ways to achieve uh this um, through education. Uh, the creation of uh, habitats that uh, produce an abundance of food, fuel, and fiber in a restorative manner, um, and uh, virtual reality, showing people what is possible by essentially uh, doing all uh, doing all of this this modeling that we're talking about. Not only the modeling of the token model, but the modeling of uh, material resource flows. Right. The economy, essentially, into these yeah, integrated yeah. habitat service networks and showing people in a virtual environment the uh, the total operation of these systems. While also uh, my wife is an art- architect. She works on the project with me. We're currently yeah. producing a rural restorative habitat that produces an abundance of uh, food, fuel and fiber. And in that manner, begin facilitating transition along with working at the political level along with working at uh the the public level with um just education and in in these rural re- restorative habitats what that we're planning on developing we'd like to turn it into an academic and academic environment where people can come and experience this is kind of like one also a, a, one additional type of transition because i think we need to present all the strategies uh along with the approaches to reduction and the approaches to amplification of specific things during this right. transition phase like i think the like ideas like you're talking about in communities and development of all this like it, it, it's inevitable to be a, a a component of what would be a movement you know mm. but you know uh you know that's the way i look at it it's undeniably I, you know, I know. The, the history yeah. we had yeah. we've had similar stuff every time we've had ideas of, of socialism we've had you know you know, it, it's just it, it, it's part of the movement. But like the, the other thing I would say is that like you know, um, our movement has to be a, like just a, just talking like game theoretically wise. Our mm-hmm. movement has to be a movement of the working class, right? Because they are the my only wife class. would say that. Yeah, they are the only class that has the numbers to to defeat the organized exploiting yep. class, right? And so, like. Uh, like our book you know like i i i feel like you know i struggle with our book sometimes is it, is it too utopian you know what i mean and, oh i don't and then I, I hope not because i don't think so i think our ideas are not utopian i think it's perfectly if if you mean feasible i think it's perfectly feasible for us to see this through right but i mean like i, I kind of probably mean it maybe in the sense of like you know, I'm just some dude sitting in my bedroom, right? Right, we're writing these books. I know that has to the way shit has to happen anyway. But like, like, you know, we, you know, we are dependent upon like, you know, any of our ideas. They have to be taken up by the the workers and outside of like understanding of of the class nature of our proposals. Like, would they have to be? embedded like our movements have to be embedded you know like the, the it's only the workers that organize workers that have had the power no more than in the feudal times it was only the organized peasants that had the power to 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 uh make the you know to to put fear into the kings you know the rule of the king so you know that's 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 what i would say is like they're just fundamental structural realities to capitalist production we got three percent that own everything, 
and they are able to hire 20% of the brightest people to protect their three, everything. And then there's 80% of, of the rest of us, right? And mm -hmm. it's only by organizing the 80% can you hope to overthrow the three and defeat the 20. And it's a numbers game. Okay, and, you know, and some people look at it that way. That's that's not the way. That is the way I, I understand that approach. My wife has that approach, and I do see that. I also have that perspective too. But I also view it as like it's we're not we're not. I'm not looking at it as like I and I understand this is because I have a lot of discussions with my wife about this. I don't look yeah. at it as class conflict, even though I understand the current structure does create cat class conflict. But I, in the vision of the future, I just. I view us as all having a common set of needs and those common set of needs apply to both the capitalist class, right? the, the top level of the capitalist class, that 3% that you're to, or 1% in some cases, yeah, and yeah. Uh, also everybody else underneath it. And part of the re the way I've been working is I've been working to say to both, to both groups, you know, to, uh, in the end, I think we should, we should be able to show both groups how, you know, how that top group is also at risk, not only of losing what they have, but losing, you know, access to the planet in some in some cases. And if we present a, a, if we present like a vision, like I think people have in the past of it, it being a conflict between classes that's going to get us to a state where we're in global fulfillment versus an engineering of global fulfillment that works for all of humanity. Uh, it's just a difference in perception and approach. It, not a well, it kind of does equate to approach too, because that the, the other people, if it's conflict, their approach allows for violence. Whereas well, if we're engineering a system any violence in the system is possibly going to detract from the final optimal vision where we're all in. I would just I would just say to you like that the uh, the history of the SPD in Germany, the Social Democratic Party, they went from a, a revolutionary party and they became a non-revolutionary party and a transition-based party, and. Uh, they they became neither a transition party nor a revolutionary party, but just nowadays, it's uh it's Schultz is the is the leader of the party, and uh, I don't know we we can disagree on that. I would I would disagree with you fundamentally. I think when I it know. comes down to it, people aren't going to sign sign up to give away their right to be rich. Even you like that that you can convince a, a percentage of capitalists to become philanthropists. Right, but you see that but you don't ever of, convince the whole class. You yeah, know? no, I I agree with you that there is a a, a generational draw to uh, power over others, um, but it's 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 about I think presenting a better vision, uh, and that ve better vision is convincing enough that maybe not obviously not everybody with power over others because that's that's a that's a generational kind of like uh social construction in some of our ego mentalities um but if, if we're creating a better if we're creating this uh, a habitat service network where everybody has their needs fulfilled and it's aesthetic i think that's what a lot of people miss now with this property that, that currently that this is why these new these new the, and the, these new habitats are so important because they present an aesthetic environment to everyone versus you know what we have now uh, the the higher level class has a more aesthetic pleasing you know environment than the other class and uh, so if we show both classes that we're able to get our all classes that we're able to optimize the fulfillment of it, our needs and you can have you, you know the best material access with an aesthetic environment that would pull some of that three percent at the top I think if we could, I'm, I'm just thinking if they're not psychopaths or sociopaths who have generational well, desire yeah. for power over yeah. others because that does that does run, you know, because of behaviors in childhood. And the other thing I would say as well, like that the like look at the experience of like uh, at how the British ruling class uh, operated. You know, they actually took their own children away from themselves, put them into harsh boarding school environments from the age of five upwards. My father went to one of those schools. Yes, right. No, he wasn't. He wasn't part of the upper class, but he just. He went you know, I went to boarding school. school myself, right? They yeah. they they, yeah. they 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 create these 
society, the, these institutions to harden people for the role of leading exploitation and stuff like this. So, like, you know, uh, the, the what, uh, uh, you know, maybe we can peel away a few percentage and we can get like a few billion quid to help us fucking set up some stuff from the super rich, right? But, uh, you know, these people are conditioned to support the system they're in. And, yes, uh, they are. I just and those conditions uh, extend you know, out not only mentally, but those conditions extend out into our material environment and right. influence daily us daily. Everything like the design of our houses, the mm -hmm. fact that like all our front doors shut and we all have our own kitchens, and you know that we don't have communal cooking places on our streets, and we don't have you know everything. Every single element of capital is structured such as to uh, self expand. Right. Yeah. And so that's just the, the nature of the beast, I think. So I'd like to leave the conversation here. Um, and I'd definitely like to talk with you again in the future because your work, it, I mean, it, it, as soon as I see your work, I will begin, if this is okay, yeah, I, yeah. I don't, you know, I'll begin integrated into the project execution document. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because, because I think, I, I, I don't know if you, you know, I, I, I could, Oravana, we have a lot of content on Oravana. So, um, right. if you I had have, a look at you had questions. one like you had one 70 or 80 page document. I had a look when you first, yeah, we uh, have, um, me. yeah. So, like, the, this is like I think the last release of the, the, the this is a print. Oh, this Jesus is not the Christ. 2000 models. <laughs> so if I just go over it quickly, like we have project execution, which is essentially yeah. execution of the document. We have right. a system overview, which essentially describes this new configuration of society. It describes the axiomatic systems that every society is composed of, that even during this uh, social transition society, it's still composed of those four systems. And you can organize, you can understand this transition configuration of society by those four systems we have a material system so all of the objects essentially because yep. reality is composed of two systems an information system uh, and which is concepts we understand yeah, yeah. in our awareness as concepts and objects then we have a lifestyle system then we uh then we have uh the project plan so a project that essentially describes this society we have a decision system so you can look at it like the economics um and that's and that's it you know maybe one one other so yeah, no, we have a we have a lot stuff. and i yeah, think yeah, yeah. i think in the future our working together in some way uh because your work i think your works I, I don't i don't meet many people as aligned with our direction i think as as you because we are yeah, kind yeah. of marginal we we are separated right now we have the people who use like new earth language we have the we have the socialists and the communists we have the people right. who uh look at the utopian sort of jacques fresco vision we're right. all aligned but we're all separate right now you right. know and we have the eco village movement and i feel coming together in some way right. and like you know we need like you know for me the most fundamentally like like it's the understanding of the social relations that everything else comes out of, you know, and it's the great flaw of the 20th century, uh, you know, socialist movement was that, you know, social relations, there was no analysis of the social relations. Uh, and I'd say that I put that on the on, on all of the traditions. There is some analysis, but not sufficient analysis. And um. You know, uh, I find most of the, uh, the like that's that's that has to be where we start because we don't start in social relations. You don't start at what is the basis, the exploiting class and the the, the exploiter, uh, the ex exploited and the exploiter. If you don't start with an understanding of what are your social relations, you end up because like the the SPD of Marx's, you know, well, it was post-Marx, but like the early SPD, they had this idea of like ending of wage labor, but it only took, it only took the death of Engels before the dominance certainly became towards a, a managerial class that would tell the proletariat what the, was good for them and that we'll decide and we'll decide it through the party, right? And so like the seeds, people say though, well, the social, Stalin was the bad guy, and all, but the seeds were actually right at the core of the class uh, battles that were done within the working class movement itself. We have history to look at now. We have history to look at the problems and analyze them. And we have the best 
analyses of those problems available to us, which I think is probably the GIC, to be honest. And with that, if we get our social relations right, we can make at least an argument that is convincing and coherent and simple enough for a movement to might actually run with it. And that like these social out of these social relations come will the proper associations can come the real the real utopias right mm-hmm. that's what we're kind of, that's what we want you know yeah. we don't want abstract utopias we want real ones but we have to get its foundation correct and like that's that's really what the book is about is about what are those necessary foundations i suppose and so two final questions. Um, so, I mean, this is, uh, other people probably watch this yeah, yeah. since we're recording this. We can, I'll share it with you when it, we're done. Um, but okay, uh, yeah. like, tell me, tell me where people can find out about the book and uh, how they can support, um, because I think this is really important work. And also your podcast, because like, I think your podcast is just, it's fantastic. Just, it, it, it is. Oh, God. The, well, the podcast is from Alpha to Omega. I think you'll find it on any of the podcatchers uh, out there. That's uh, and, and the book is, the website for the book is called the classless society emotion.com. It's the provisional title for the book, but we have about 20 others, so we don't know where it's going to go. Uh, people can contribute to the book right in there, or they can support the podcast through the Patreon. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my plugs. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Yeah, this is, um, I really, I just want to say I really appreciate your your work. And, you know, uh, when you're done with the book, could you let me know? Or I'll probably oh, I I prefer to know, yeah, like, no. soon, because, yeah. like, through the podcast. Like, we're writing, days. we have, we've, we've got 26 chapters provisionally to write. We are, okay. we have nearly, well, we have about nearly three done. Um We've only really started writing in the last month or two. Most of it has been like a few years of research. But um, so we're, we're, we're planning to try and do it this year to finish it like in, in 12 months. Uh, okay. we, we released this in April that we we're doing the project. Uh, it was 12 months then and it's still 12 months off. So hopefully it won't be 12 months off for uh, forever. <laughs> but that's the that's the kind of time range we're looking at. Um okay. So yeah, it should be. We're it's about it would be around five hundred pages, I think, in length. That's the kind of size of book. Five hundred pages. Okay, that's a good size book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With history, with background on the subject matter, and then the you know right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like at least half of the book is uh, and like a a book half of the book is uh an introduction to the kind of uh, you know kind of marxist so ideas of economics and social relations and why they're important and then a, a look at all of the uh a critique of all of the actually the the systems that have been tried and then and explaining why they failed and then a look at all of the major proposals that we're aware of and an analysis of them from an economic and a class relations point of view and how we're going to show the kind of tendencies of them and and the problems associated with them and then we build out upon uh, the GIC then and uh, have all of the new content and we you know we lay out uh, essentially uh, an an analysis of of, of a socialist society based upon those foundations that's a general structure I think that's essential for anybody like in the future watching this this is like this is absolutely essential for our transition and, uh, you know, there there aren't that many people on the planet thinking of this. And I think we need to think about this now. And it's people like us who will design this system and then bring greater awareness to the fact that, you know, in the future, we can have a type of society that where uh, we are all fulfilled and we're not destroying the earth in order to uh, to meet the global right. optimized access of all of us. Right. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. All right, Tom. Well, th- hey, thank right, you so Thomas, much. Yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you this. Like I'll put it all together in in a video and cool. send it to you. So. Brilliant. All right. Well, thanks for having us. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, all any any um any PR for the book or the podcast greatly appreciated. And yeah, uh, I love it. I love both. Yeah, get in get in touch any time, and I'll I'll uh, I'll keep you informed of how we're getting on. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, you too. All right. All right, Travis. See Ciao. you. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Ciao.